we're back again, everyone, and um, we're we're coming with uh, by scripture alone, by scripture alone, sola scriptura, and we'll be we'll be having our discussion all the way from April twenty fifth to May first. I'm glad that you have joined us again, our crew again with uh, with our Sabbath school lesson, and we're just going to ask you to share this with someone because we want someone to know exactly how the Bible works in our lives, in our lives. I just wanna welcome everybody back together again, the panel, we're here again, and we are, um, we're on something that's revolutionary. We're on something that uh, is gonna cause us all to think. So I just wanna open up right away with Sola Scriptura. It sounds grand, it sounds deep, it sounds, it sounds exciting. So. Sola Scriptura, you know what it means, uh, everybody in the panel, I know you went through it. Uh, Jack, what does it mean to you? It means by Scripture alone, that we order our lives in line with the principles of Scripture and the final judge in terms of literature is Scripture alone. I, I, listen, you're saying Scripture alone. You know, you're saying the Bible alone. That's that's what I'm hearing from you. Am I correct? You're correct. O okay, okay, Miss Cynthia, I, I I need you on this. Talk, talk to me. Scripture alone. When you're thinking of this word called sola scriptura, what comes to your mind? It's not saying that I can't read anything else, but it's saying that when I'm making my decision on the principles or what my actions are going to be. I have to make sure that what I'm reading lines up with the principles illuminated in the scriptures, <laughs> to the word and to the testimony. If it's not there, then it's not acceptable. Uh oh, I, I, I'm having a feeling this is going to get it's going to get heated as we go along. It's going to get heated as we go along. Dave, what, what, what's, what's, what's your thoughts? Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura means just what it says by, by scripture alone, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's something born out of, it's something born out of conflict, separation, uh, a, a, a separatism. So Sola Scriptura has always been about as I establish doctrine, as I establish dogma, then I rely on the word of God specifically and only for the establishment of that dogma or that doctrine or that denominationalism. I, uh, wh why, Dave? Why? Why already? No, but the reason why we need to know this is because the whole Protestant movement coming out of the Catholicism came about because of sola scriptura, right? Uh, Martin Luther came out, and he's not the only one. He's the one that's that's saying, "Hey, uh, let's get rid of some of these traditions." along the way. Remember, we've had extensive conversations and I don't mind us bringing it back because we need to bring some of these things back. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing where we're talking about Sola Scriptura, but I'm also seeing where traditions are heavy. Uh-oh. There's nothing wrong with tradition. Okay. It's really not, but all tradition needs to be judged by scripture. If the tradition, we, we said it in one of the lessons where Mark was bringing out the point in his book that you make void God's word by your tradition. So if, if we allow tradition to trump what God has to say, then we're out of order. Anyone else? Anyone else? He said it. I mean, two words. Sola Scriptura. Right. So here we are with alone. That's the word I'm coming out with, alone, right? But yet in the Protestant movement, there's so many different denominations, so many people, so many people. Let's even, let's, let's even come out of denom denominations for a second because we have people who say, hey, I read the Bible and... Uh, I'm going to take out of it what I need to take out of it. We're not talking about interpretation right now. What, when, we're talking about sola scriptura. So if, if we're reading the Bible alone, um, uh, uh, is, that, is that the only thing that we should deal with? Remember, we talked about culture last week. We talked about reasoning last week. 
Uh, they just threw in dogma, doctrine, and I, I understand that. Do, my question to us is, are we truly, let's get to the fact of it. Are we truly dealing with scripture alone or are we taking some of our experiences and, and um, proof texting what we want to proof text to make it right? Come on, help me. You know, the lesson um, alluded to the fact that even when we are attempting to use scripture alone, it still has to be late to our culture and our experiences. So in that venue, you have to ask the Lord to the Holy Spirit to just guide you to be intentional about interpreting what he's trying to put in but still understanding that I'm going to receive it according to my culture mm -hmm. and my experience. Mm -hmm. Dave, talk to me about proof texting real quick. Nope. Absolutely <laughs> not. Nope. Um, I, I just, I just, I'm just not going to. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's <clears throat> like we said, if, if you want to, if you want to justify uh, taking your kid outside and, 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 and murdering and eating your child, you can find an instance in the Bible where it's done and you could point to it and say, oh, well, look, they did it. I can do it too. Um, you know, the, the Bible can be used and misconstrued to, 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 to promote anything. Like we see it even now in modern day Protestantism where uh, they can utilize one portion of the Bible to underpin a particular ideology and in the very second forget that, oh, okay, babies should be born, but they shouldn't be fed. Like, so we can use the Bible to, we can use the Bible to, to, to sort of say anything we want. It's the totality of the word together. It's the living, breathing Bible that existed in the personhood of Jesus Christ as he walked the earth and showed us what the living, the Bible, sola scripturally actually looked like, that it wasn't just the law, it was grace, that it wasn't just uh, a thus saith the Lord, it was the Lord loves you. Uh, you know, so, you know, we, we get we get in danger when we try to proof text and, yeah, and, and I'm going to stop there. And, and no, no, no. And I threw it in there purposely. I'm going to go back to Miss Cynthia real quick when you were talking about, you know, and, and let's just do it. Let's just let's just talk about it. If it's going to be about the Bible, there has to be some elements that come a, a, a across with it you started off by talking about the Holy Spirit. I know we talk about that all the time for the past couple of weeks we've discussed it, but you cannot approach the Bible with your own ideology. Am I correct? You can't do it. So it's, so it's almost like you have to unpack or, or um, you, you, gotta, you gotta let loose who you are in order to be filled. You gotta empty yourself in order to be filled. Jack, help me. I'm gonna come to you, Cynthia. Jack, help me and then we'll go through. You have to come to scripture as if you don't know so that it can teach you. As opposed to I'm coming to scripture with all of my baggage and I'm going to see scripture through my rose colored glasses. We've, we've got to put our glasses aside and say, what does this actually say? And what does this actually mean? So that I can now bring it into my life and understand how to govern myself based on what I learned, not based upon what I brought to it. Okay, hold on. Governing yourself. Miss Amy, I'm gonna come to you on this, this piece right here. Governing yourself. You, 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 you. You, 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 you're speaking as though I'm on a street and I have a yellow line here. You know what I mean? The yellow double line here and, and we have the dotted lines here. I'm hearing, uh, I'm seeing as we were studying this thing called the ruling norm. Ruling norm. Um, should the Bible, Sola Scriptura again, should that be, Miss Cynthia, our ruling norm? Yes, it relates back to something that um, Dave said long ago, that it's the living word. We look at it as words, but the Bible is nothing but a written manifestation of Jesus. I need to govern myself 
by the principles outlined in there because within them, he's explaining himself. He's giving us his thoughts. He's given us his heart. He's giving us, the, he came as an example. And so, yes, I can safely use the Bible with the Holy Spirit helping me to interpret correctly, to govern the actions, the patterns, and the thoughts of my life. But sometimes I go through a religious experience, mm. right? Sometimes I go through a, 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 a human reasoning. Is it because, and help me here, is it, there's some things that I read in the Bible that, and I'm playing devil's advocate, that, that um, it, it just doesn't sit well with me. It makes me uncomfortable. You know, it, 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 I don't know. I, and I don't have one specific thing that I'm pointing out to you. I need help because many of us, whether you're in the school system evangelistically or whether you are in the church or whether we're in the office, it doesn't make a difference. Somebody comes to us and says, and we've heard this, I, I, I hear what, I hear what the Bible is saying, but I don't know if I really believe that thing. Um, um, uh, Jack and, and and then Dave, please help me with that. Yeah, we we want humans do exactly what they want to do, and okay. nothing else. Okay. The you know, devil didn't make you do it; you did it because that's what you wanted to do. <laughs> the issue here is whether or not I'm going to be humble enough to accept what God has to say to me, as opposed to telling God what I'm going to accept from him. Um, before, before you go on, Dr. Dave, uh, the devil didn't make you do it? No, 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 let's, somebody is listening to this as we're talking through this. And I have a tendency of saying, Satan, you made, Satan, you, Satan, you put this, Help, just, just unpack that for a quick second before we go through, before we continue. The reason I say that is yeah. it, it, it can sound logical, but Jesus said through Paul, with every temptation, the Lord makes a way of way. escape. That's true. So if we want to escape, we can. <laughs> we don't because we don't want to. Moses said, or, or Paul, the writer of Hebrews said of Moses, he chose rather to suffer the affliction with the people right, of God right. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. All the reason people sin is because they enjoy it. <laughs> people don't do what they don't want to do. You're exactly right about that. So if you like it, so hold on, wait a minute then. We started off this whole thing. Dave, I, I, I'm gonna come to you on, on this real quick. We started off this whole thing. The Bible tells us that the word goes in, right? Cuts, cuts going in. Cuts coming out. I was talking about human reasoning because for me, human reasoning feels good. Um, I understand what God says. I understand what the prophets wrote. Um, but help me, help me get to that point, um, um, therapist, counselor. Help me get to that point where the Bible, the word, I know you said the living word, can actually change my trajectory in going the human route a foundational principle of of learning or or change is there has to be a period of intentional unlearning before i can actually learn where i have to expose myself to my predisposed uh, uh, uh presuppositions about life about living um, I gotta, I gotta deal with even in the in the therapeutic space. I gotta deal with my trauma in order for me to experience uh, a different level of joy. Our, our challenge sometimes is um, we don't take the word of God as, in a blank slate. We filter it through our culture. We filter it through our past. We filter it through our hurts, our pains, our joys, our sorrow, whatever it is we filter it through. The, uh, the, the idea of Sola Scriptura means that we have to come to the Bible empty so that the Holy Spirit can interpret for us the scriptures. Uh, and this is the biggest challenge that we have is that um, the reason that Sola Scriptura became such a big thing uh, uh, during the Protestant Reformation was that the, 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 the Catholic Church at the time, 
they made the priesthood or they made the church itself the authority on scripture. Why right. it was written in Latin, nobody spoke it. Right. Uh, you had to go to the priest for your penance, uh, all these kinds of things. And what the Protestant Reformation was all about is taking the authority of the Bible and the interpretation of scripture and putting it in its right place with the Holy Spirit and with the individual. But however, now this is going to get me in trouble. However, we do the same thing now right. when we don't go to the scripture to search the scripture. Right. We instead repeat the company line that we learned uh, when we were kids right. so that we even pull in stuff that we believe that ain't even in the Bible. <laughs> like one thing that irritates me is that that quote, God will never put more on you than you than you can bear. That's not in the Bible. That's not <laughs> biblical. But you, I know plenty of people that will act like that's in scripture. That's right. Um, so so that's the danger. There has to be a period of unlearning in order for us to really approach the Bible. I was just about to ask- to only authority. I was just about to ask Miss Cynthia about that and you came out with the word unlearning, uh, um, that we had to unlearn something, right? Wake up in the morning and, and I want I want to, Miss Cynthia, I want to deal with school, um, curriculum. It, you know, I'm kind of going in that area, right? I've, I've taught a kid four years old. Dave, when your child was four, all of our kids was four years old, five, we were teaching them, all right? I'm, I'm kind of looking at this whole COVID situation where parents are now like, I didn't learn this this way. <laughs> I'm seeing people all online, parents online saying, is that some kind of new math or, or something of that nature? When, when we grew up, and you could take this education, you could take this anyway, I'm going, I'm going through the whole point of unlearn, uh, unlearning something. We grew up, before you brush your teeth, kneel down next to your bed, pray. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't even grow up, and I'm talking about traditionally now, right? I, the tradition that I grew up with was you get up, the first thing you do when you open your eyes, you pray, All right? When you pray to God, that and the other, now you can go brush your teeth. Or even when we did worship, we were following the Sabbath school lesson. Or we, all right, that's, that's how we were, uh, grew up. Or at night, it was a Sabbath school lesson. But we were never, I, we were never taught read the Bible. I'm not talking about Pathfinders. Okay, I'm not talking about Pathfinders. I'm not talking about, because Pathfinders have that curriculum. School have that curriculum. As I'm going through this thing, somebody might be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, I've never really read through the Bible or understood what we, I read parts of the Bible, uh, but I've never really read through the Bible. In education, in order to turn someone's, and I'm talking about a child, okay? They're teaching, they're learning around something that they've been doing for so long, and now you're teaching them new math or a new way to do things. Help me, try, give me a spiritual connotation. Give me something where now I need to stop with all of these. Um, and I, I'm not, I know I'm being long winded, but I want to get this out of all of us. I need to stop doing these Sabbath school lessons as my filler. Uh oh. Please help me. I'm going to start with education. Help me with this to recognize that the Sabbath school lesson uh -oh, is not your main devotion. Oh, boy. Okay. Dave, I'm in your boat now. I'll, I'll well, start okay. with the unlearning, learning. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and I started smiling when you said that because all first kindergarten and first grade teachers, one of the things they bemoan is the child who comes to school already knowing how to read or how to do something. Wow. Because invariably, they have been taught a different method than what the teacher is going to use. Mm -hmm. But now they've got to work with uh, overcoming some of the theories and the methodologies that the child has been taught. Yeah. It, takes it takes repetition. Actually, you have to hear something almost 21 times before it actually becomes yours. And that's why they say, if you want to start a new habit, if you do something days. consecutively, 21 straight days, yeah. now you can claim it as your new habit. Wow. And so when we have been steeped in certain actions and certain beliefs, 
it takes intentionality to overcome that. It's not just going to be because, oh, I want to think differently. You've got to labor with and make an effort to know that, okay, this is something I have got to really dig deep to know the difference. And it also leads us, unlearning leads us to reasoning. I'm not, but I'm not going to get on that. I'll let no, no, no. And the reason why I say that is because <clears throat> not only evangelistic for someone who doesn't, who's learning about Christ now, learning about God, reading the Bible, but there's some of us also that have to break some bad habits. Um, and that's what's frightening me. That's that's what I, I, I you know, we're, we're on this panel discussing this thing and, and all of us has to do introspection to say, hold on, do I proof text? Do I, do I get, okay, I walked into, I was getting gas yesterday and I walked in and wanted some potato chips, okay, unhealthy. And I'm right next to me, $264 million um, lottery. lottery. Immediately, and I'm talking about the seconds in my mind, I'm saying to myself, okay, where in the Bible does it say not to play the lotto? Immediately in my mind, right? <clears throat> then if somebody came to me right away and said to me, hey, uh, um, buy it. I mean, wh wh what sense does it make? If, if we win, we're going to give money to the church. We're going to, this is that, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. I'm recognizing that there is not a written thing. In, I'm getting to interpretation now because we, we need to get, to get interpretation. And this is yesterday that I'm reading. And I said to myself, if I bought this, who said that? I'm, I, hold on. The principle is in the Bible, everybody, okay? The principle is there. But there's nowhere in there that tells me that I can't play the lotto. It doesn't have to use the word lotto, draw straws. In the Bible, we talk about drawing straws and all this kind of, okay, okay. So why I'm saying that, Miss Cynthia, is because, okay, stop laughing, Jack, I'm coming. What, 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 a, what I wanted to get to was, there's some things we have to unlearn in order to let Christ in, Holy Spirit in. This word, the Bible is not a living word to me unless I'm allowing it to breathe around me. And, and, and Jack, you were laughing, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. It wasn't because I wanted to say something that was humorous, <laughs> but since you called them, <laughs> we have to work out our own salvation with okay. fear and trembling. Okay. We cannot lean on what does the group say about this subject or that subject. We've got to get to a point where we actually have a personal relationship with God based on what God is saying to us. Paul even said, you have to obey God rather than man. True. We cannot allow ourselves to decide to surrender our conscience to a group, even if you call it a denomination. Okay. Even if you call it the remnant. Okay. You cannot surrender your conscience to a group. You must surrender to God. And you got to work that out with fear and trembling. Okay. Okay. I'm, 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 this is, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Doctor, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, for, first off, uh, I would have bought that lotto ticket and said, God says the silver and gold belong to me. <laughs> um, however, uh, you know, a, a part of a part of this unlearning experience and getting us to the point where we can really truly receive. Remember, the disciples are having a conversation with Jesus about who's the greatest. And then Jesus says, you know what? Stop all that noise. Come here, little children, except you be converted or be like one of them, meaning innocent, open, uh, 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 pliable. Uh, 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 unless you become like one of them, you can't get to the kingdom of heaven. And, and that's, one of our, well, that's one of our problems with us touting so much how we know. One of our biggest challenges with the Adventist church is, one of my biggest challenges with our church and our historical evangelism has always been that we're gonna to prove to you that we're right and your church is wrong. Right. We're gonna right. scare we're gonna scare you with beasts and images and 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 all of this other stuff as opposed to the love of Jesus because we think that our biblical understanding of this separates us from other people. 
And the problem with denomination is in order for your denomination to exist, denomination which, which has its at its root separatism, in order for your denomination to exist, you have to be separate from someone else. Well, that goes contrary to the Bible, because if we all believed in just the literal word of God, then there would be just one universal church. Sure. Uh, but the idea behind denomination is that we have to be separate, apart. We have to have a different idea or a different view of scripture. I'm going to stop if I get fired. I, no, no, no. <laughs> and I think the biggest issue for me is no denomination is going to heaven. We're all going as individuals who have a personal relationship with God. So my concern as a pastor in a denomination is that people would dare say that we in this denomination are superior to anybody else in theirs. There's, there's, there's only one heaven. Right, right. So I have to get on two things really quick. The unity of scripture, and please, I know that our lesson was talking about Old and New Testament, okay? I don't wanna talk about Old and New Testament. Uh, as far as unity is concerned, okay? I want us to unpack it a little bit deeper than unity of scripture. We all know, we've been going through this for weeks and, and, and for those who are listening, if you have been, uh, it, it, we've been talking about the Old and the New Testament are together. Right? We know that already. But I wanna take the unity of scripture and the clarity of scripture because Dave, you said it. Um, um, we've all been talking, we've, we've just said denomination is a group. We know that, all right? I don't even want to touch remnant right now. What I want us to unpack really quick are two things, uni unity of scripture, right? And I also want us to talk about clarity of scripture. If we could just kind of uh, compress both of those together. Anyone, please, anyone. Unity of scripture, clarity of scripture. Come on, help me. Unity isn't talking about every word is the same. It's the unity of the principles and the concepts and the theme, because okay. the central theme of the Bible is salvation. Right. Salvation through Jesus, right. not just salvation. Right. With Christ being the, the Old Testament, even though we're not separating, but the Old Testament just foretells. Right. The New Testament tells you, okay, I'm here now, and this is what's going to happen. But this is what I told you in the Old Testament. Perfect harmony, perfect unity. Ah, ah, ah. You just called out, you just called it out, unity and harmony. And one of the reasons why I said I did not want to do the New Testament, Old Testament, and say, okay, this one, this one. The reason why I didn't want to do that is because I don't want them separated. I, I don't want to look at it as a separation type of thing. Um, and I, I like that because Dave was also was saying that if we all read the scripture in what it is, we would have one church not to worry, not worrying about it. But I still go back to looking at us as being sinful, though we be sinful, though we be Jack, what you were, what you were saying before is that if the human mind is going to say, this is what I think it is, or I interpret it to be, um, then it's going to destroy in some way or another, what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us as far as what clarity comes across as, right? Unity, harmony, and clarity. Question for you all. Have you ever seen something or read something in the Bible that you didn't understand? Hold on. I'm sure that answer is yes. That was clarified as you read more in the Bible, whether it's all of it in the New Testament or all of it in the Old Testament, has it ever happened to you before? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the Bible even says the path of the just shines more and more until that perfect day. So we all come with misunderstanding, okay. with confusion, with right. not knowing. And as we walk in the light, as he is the light, Mm -hmm. We gain more and more understanding as we go along. I could give specific examples, but it might offend some of our hearers. So I, won't. <laughs> I think that's the reason why a lot of people like to listen to us, because uh, <laughs> because we say some more off the off the wall stuff. Dave, go ahead. 
with, with the unity of scripture, with, with the, um, the scripture, scripture has the ability to elucidate and illuminate itself. Okay. So if I don't understand something, then let me go back and let me find out, you know, where it was used before. Let me find out what scripture had to say about this, uh, th this topic already. Uh, e even we, we see from the lesson uh, that even Jesus utilized scripture to uh, illuminate his points, that, that, that the Bible, that, that the Bible was, the Bible was written to, to, to teach us. And so everything, it, you, how, how can one understand the New Testament without first understanding the old how can one take the old testament and not accept the fact that this this this, this word which was written down then became life right. well if you accept the, the the old without the new all you have is a book of stories and 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 a book of uh, of fables and tales unless that book came alive in 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 matthew mark luke and john it doesn't mean anything and, and how can you just accept the Gospels without the writings of writings of Paul in, in, in the epistle? Because then Jesus becomes all that there is, and you then have no hope that he's coming again. The Bible as a continuous book of, you know, man fall, God is, he said he come, he's coming, he shows up, he says he's coming again. Like we talked about before, the Bible is just God's credit report. And if you take apart one piece and don't take the other, then you don't have all the data that you don't have. Picture. I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in here. What I just got out of this is that scripture um, interprets for scripture. Am, am I right? Is that what we're, that we got out of the lesson? Is that what we understand as scripture? But then I'm going to go, I'm going to take a little bit more time with this, okay? Uh, I want to take a little, a little bit more time with this. So those who are watching this and, and those who are using it as uh, for teaching, just hold on a second, because I need to add these two um, pieces in there. Scripture, interpret scripture. Um, in my library, I have commentaries. Uh-oh. In my library, I have um, lexicons. I have Greek. Um, help me, guys. Help me. Uh, I have I have Greek lexicons. I, I have Hebrew lexicons. I have Aramaic lexicons. I have all of those things in there. When I don't understand something, is it okay? I'm going to go through two things, and let me just open it up for you right now as we come to. I'm going to go through other writings because now we're messing around with sola scriptura if we're bringing those things in okay let's just be fair we have lexicons we have um adventist commentaries there's there's baptist commentaries or all of that um am i breaking the rule and after this i'm going to i'm going to other writers so let me just step right here real quick when we am i breaking rules by taking out lexicons and going back to original writings, etc. Please help me unpack that before I get to the next one. Jack? Uh, absolutely not. You need those tools to help you understand the meaning of the okay. text. Okay. okay. Uh, so any, any scripture, you've got to know what the context was. What was the social context? What was uh, what was the season of the year? What was the the habit? What was the culture? What was what did it mean when it was said? So we can discern what the principle is that I can apply in my life right now. So those tools are very helpful. Um, Miss Cynthia, I'm coming. I'm coming, Dave. Miss Cynthia, there are tools used in education. Yes. Um. Um. I say this even now for parents who are trying to help their kids. I'm going, I'm getting, I'm getting back to scripture. I, am I cheating by using tools? Am I cheating by using those tools to help me understand something better? I want to hear from an education standpoint because I want to know now, I heard what you said, Jack, but I want to know, am I using these tools to get what I want out of it? I heard you, Jack. Miss Cynthia, help me. Are tools good? Tools are good, but you have to remember that they're, they're, they're just that. They're tools. Okay. Okay. Tools are instruments okay. one uses to complete a function, okay. to help them, assist them. Okay. And he, because even Paul uses tools. 
If you go to 2 Timothy 1.13, he says, The cloak that I left at Troas and Carpus, when yeah. thou comest, bring with them and the books, but especially the parchments. So to me, he's saying, I'm, I read other things. I read the books, bring all of my things, bring my coat, but especially the parchments. My understanding that the parchments to which he was referring were the scriptures. I got you. Dave, help me with the DSM-4 real quick. What is that? You're, you're muted. You're... The, the, the DSM what? Whatever the DSM is. I don't know the number oh, now. Listen, the, 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 as, far as, tools, as far as tools are concerned, right? The, the tools help us to underpin or explain to us nuances in the biblical text. Okay. Uh, with the DSM-5, it's nuances in human behavior, right. um, you know, so that we don't rely on just our knowledge, but we rely on those who took even more time to study. Most of us don't take the time to become biblical scholars. And so the, the key is you take people's scholarship and you read an amalgamation of sources. If you say you want to put together a sermon, you read many sources so that you get a clear picture. But the most important tool is the guide of the Holy Spirit, right. where the Holy Spirit filters through what it is that uh, what it is that you need, what it is that makes sense. Um, but but the idea that we can't read other things other than the Bible is absurd. And I know that we're going here because it's you leading this devotional, this uh, this Sabbath school lesson. So it, let me just be the first to just throw out um, Ellen Ellen White. Go ahead. That's where we're going. Ellen White, uh, uh, the, the the prophet to the church, who is also and set herself up as a tool to utilize as a lesser light to lead to the greater light, which was the Bible. Right. Now, there's some great desire of ages, steps to Christ, yep. uh, uh, the great controversy, uh, you know, the great resources, great tools to understand uh, the complexities of, of the battles between uh, God and Satan, the, 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 the you know, the so life. You, of Jesus. So you read Wonderful. them. So you read them. In Pathfinders a long time ago. Because <laughs> yes, I was a good Pathfinder. Come on, um, now, now land that plane. You started something. Land that plane. Yeah, I forgot. No, no. Uh, so, so, so the, the the reason that we the reason that we have these things is so that the Bible becomes alive, but it doesn't replace the Bible. The right. Bible is 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 the foundation is the foundation of anything as we attempt to relate to God that we need. Those I'm, other things can I, illuminate it. I go, go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. I got you, you Dave. Cannot but... use a tool to like the, the writings of Ellen White to prove Scripture. You've got to use Scripture to prove the legitimacy of the tool. Oh, the other way around. Okay, hold on, Miss Cynthia. I'm going to throw this in your lap. So, part of our tradition is always to bring up Sister White. I want to know from you, and I'm talking about poignant answers here. I want to know from you, what does Sister White say about her own writings and scripture? Help me. I don't know if we're ready for this. So Sister White was very pointed in saying, do not go around saying Sister White said this, Sister White said that, or Sister White said the other. Her admonition is go to the scriptures. And the scripture alone is to be your guide for life. I believe she even said, my writings would not have been necessary had you been studying scripture like you needed to. <laughs> or oh, she considered herself the lesser light pointing to the greater light. But you know, every, and the worst part about when we read her writings, we interpret it as um, on the same wavelength as uh, the Bible. That's one. And we misinterpret what she says the majority of the time. Because some of the things that she say, go back to what you said before, culture, time of day, you know what I mean, uh, uh, um, setting. 
what was actually happening in, in during those times. I, you know, there, there are people who have said, there are people right now who do not ride bicycles. Come on. Oh, yeah. Because she said we shouldn't ride bicycles. Any one of us in, 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 on this panel could tell us why she said not to ride bicycles. Somebody help me. Because she specifically said, because we need the money to get the movement going. So it wasn't that bicycles were evil. She was saying, can you, can you uh, set that aside for now so that we can use these funds to get this movement going? Jesus is soon to come. That was her push. Exactly, exactly. That's what I mean by the settings of where we are, the settings of reading where we are. Um, Patrick. Yes. I actually found the exact quote. Go ahead. I'm going to read it. When you make the Bible your food, your meat and your drink, when you make as principles the elements of your character, you will know better how to receive counsel from God. Yeah. I exalt the precious word before you today. Do not repeat what I have said saying, Sister White said this and Sister White said that. Find out what the Lord God of Israel says and then do what he commands. All right, all right, everybody. I'm leaving Sister White for a second. I know we're going over time, but I'm leaving Sister White for a second. I know some really good preachers that I like listening to. Uh-oh. I, I, listen, I drink from C.D. Brooks. I drink from Noel Jones. I drink from T.D. Jakes. I, I'm going across the board here now, right? Even in our denomination, across denominations, and you can name them as they go along. Um, should we be careful? of how we ideal, ideal, idolize preachers. I'm still talking about the word. Should we be careful that we're listening to what they say and how they interpret? Just just help me a little bit there. I, I, I know it was in our lesson for a little bit, but I just wanna, wanna ask that question for those of us who, who read, who, who, who are not reading the Bible as much as they're listening to, um, to other speakers or other preachers or other teachers. I'd rather call it teachers. Help me real quick with that. It's wonderful to listen to the word of God from wherever it comes. That's okay. wonderful. Okay. But at the end of the day, when they are not there to tell you what the Bible says, what are you going to do when you have to make your own decision in that moment and they're not on the radio right now? Right. Must have your own, own relationship with God based upon washing your mind with the water of the word. You've got to think like Christ because you spend time with him yourself. 21 days, counselor, therapist, 21 days, teacher, curriculum. <sighs> Somebody is saying... Man, I need to open up the word of God. No, no, come on, come on. Go ahead, go ahead, Jack. You ahead. just read one scripture a day. I mean, it's better than none. <laughs> and you're never going to unpack one completely. But spend, just spend some time. I don't care if you pick up a physical Bible and just throw it up and let it land and you read what's in front of you. Read the Bible. At some point, you'll find it so wonderful, you'll say it like, uh, like the deer panted after the water brook, so I pant after your word. Yeah. It'll get there, but you don't start there. Just start. Right. right. I always tell people, go, go, go to the Gospels. Go to Gospels in Genesis. And, you know, it, it try, you know we, we're, we're trying to read it like it's a storybook when it's really God just unpacking himself to who we are. That's how we know him. Revelation, as we talked about weeks ago, he just unpacks himself to us. I'm grateful to hear that because somebody wants to know, how can I get in the word or get back into the word? You it, said, it, go ahead, go ahead. We're, we're, we're oversat. We, we, we can be oversaturated even like you can get the Bible on your phone. You can subscribe to uh, an app that will send you a text today. You can any way that you get it. Uh, I want people to understand that God will not run from you as you seek God. If you seek <laughs> relationship with God, he is the how he wants you more than you could ever dream about wanting him. As a matter of fact, 
he died and, and gave his life for you. Wow. So there, there is no searching for God that he will run from you. He, it, it's, it's antithetical to who he is. Um, and, and, and even so start somewhere. Get right. subscribe to a text today. There, 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 there are apps that will read to you. There's, there's, there's even anxiety apps that will read the scripture to you as you go to sleep at night. Right. Uh, as you wake up, whatever it is, uh, uh, do something to to get ingrained in the Word of God. And we we went there. So let me just go go, ahead. go, go ahead. back to the 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 the, the glorifying uh, a preacher stuff. Is that listen? I, don't feel guilty because you enjoy listening to other people elucidate the word of God from their own experiences, from their own uh, culture, from their own uh, understanding. Listen, I would, I wish that I could sit down and watch preaching instead of the 10 hours of foolishness that I watch. So if I substitute the, the foolishness I watch for some preaching, man, that's probably even better. So that's don't right. feel guilty about that. Oh, and, and let me, let me, panelists, Please, I wasn't saying that we should not. That's not what, that, that's definitely wasn't where I was with that. What I want us to understand, what I want our, 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 watch, our, our listeners to understand is we have to know how to divide what's coming from the word, what's coming from a person's opinion and how they break it down. Please listen to the word of God. And I agree with you. I, I have no problems with that at all. And please don't, don't, don't take that for where it is. What I, I, what I enjoy out of this is that in a personal way, I need to read the Bible more. This is personal, right? All of us, we say, okay, we've read it. We've this, that. Yeah. But we need to get to a point. And those of you who are, are, are watching this, open up the Bible. You said it. You know, Dave, you said it. God's not going to run from us, right? He, if we come to him, he's going to be there with us. So um, don't get to that point. Don't get to that point of running from him. I need to bring this to a close. And the way I want to bring this to a close is this. How should we approach? How should we approach the word? I don't care how you want to bring it uh, out. There's somebody who says, man, my Bible is sitting right over there. It's on my night table. It's on my, um, it's on my coffee table, my postum table. It's, it's there. Everything is there. My, my question is, how do I approach it? I'm going to go uh, uh, past, uh, Pastor Dave. I'm going to go to our educator. I'm going to go to our attorney. And then we're going to bring this to a close. Help me. How do I approach getting back into the word or getting into the word period. Dave, I need you. With an open mind and an open heart. Man. Open mind and an open heart. Miss Cynthia? In simplicity and just ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Don't, don't try to just take it all at once, just in simplicity. Just start somewhere. Simplicity. So I'm coming, Jack. Simplicity. Open heart. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Jack, go ahead, please. I agree with what has been said. I would whisper a prayer. Give me your understanding. Give wow. me understanding of your word so I can see you. Because it's not about scholarship. It's about relationship. Oh, man. I'm reading the Bible not to be a scholar of the Bible. Satan believes and trembles. I'm reading the Bible to get to know God for myself, and he will reveal himself to you. Amazing. A little bit emotional right now, but amazing. Um, I need to get back to it. And, and you know what I'm saying. I, I need, we, we all need to get back to it. Um, someone said this earlier, and I'd like to end it this way. Um, the student of the Bible should be taught to approach, approach it. And I think Jack said this, one of us said this in the spirit of learning, the spirit of learning. Um, I pray today that we all approach the Bible on all these characteristics, open mind, uh, open heart, uh, praying, 
to ask God for wisdom and understanding as we get it. But more than that, have a relationship with, with, with the God who gave this to us. I want to thank everyone and please take the opportunity of sharing this with friends. Uh, even though it's just for the week, it could be for somebody else in a, at another day in time. So as we pray, I ask that you open up the word of God and let it fill your hearts. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for just giving us this opportunity, giving us the time to just discuss uh, the Bible and, and how it unpacks for all of us. We love you, God. And we ask you, Lord, that this may go around the world so that someone may have an understanding of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.